Thank you for your applause. I would like to suggest now that we welcome one of the people in charge of this uh, initiative, one of the, Jenny Videla, the president of the uh, Socialist and Democratic Group. socialista francese perché su questa questione si gioca non il futuro di un partito, ma si gioca il futuro del mondo. E questa è una questione che inerisce il modello di sviluppo che noi vogliamo costruire. Non è tanto fissare un target per fissare un target, ma è capire che o si cambia il modello di sviluppo economico che finora sopravvive. Sorry, it was a technical problem. The economic model that is ours is uh, in a survival mode and uh, near the end. My colleague Van Brandt, uh, vice president of the group, and all our colleagues who are here, including Gilles, Victor, Matthias, all my colleagues, we all want up to fight for this uh, Paris meeting. This meeting is of the greatest importance. We have to go, we have to switch from a linear economy to a circular economy. We have to go from a production-based, consumption-based development model uh, to tr transforming waste to a model of development, of recycling, of uh, reusing, of sorting, etc. To go from one model to another, investments will be necessary. To work in this way, it is indispensable to invest strongly in this transformation process that we call energetic transition, which will take us from a linear economy to the circular economy. And for this, commitments must be universal. This is what we've been saying, and this is what we are going to do. This is what we'll have to affirm, and this affirmation must be shared, must be part of a common intention declaration. There must be a also a five-year follow-up process because all the states which will commit themselves by signing will have to, uh, of course, show their uh, the way they fulfill this commitment. They, will, they take a commitment, they will have to give accounts. There will be public expenses and private uh, expenses which will be necessary to have this uh, strong political and cultural um, mobilization. Leaders uh, are present, uh, and uh, the Secretary General uh, of the uh, Socialist Party, which made this th question one of the strong pillars of his uh, action, is here among us. And I would like to thank again uh, Cambad Mr. Cambadelis uh, by his side, by our side, by, there are more than a hundred uh, young people coming from uh, the whole of Europe, not just from France. They're here with us, among us, 
to go on to fight for in this battle. Uh, President Timmermans is, is here. Representatives from national uh, parties, our colleagues in the European Parliament, the, the President of FEBS, uh, those who are next to the militants, uh, the activists, to the young people, we are all concerned by this uh, political, social and cultural fight in France as in other European countries. There are, in fact, three major forces. The First of all, the conservative uh, forces, and you know who I'm talking about. Uh, the conservatives, uh, everything works in the best uh, possible world, everything works well, uh, and they, well, let's keep the statu quo. And then there is this other force, uh, this destructive force, this force, uh, uh, Le Pen in, in France, uh, uh, Salvini in Italy, this uh, racist uh, right, this Nazi right, this uh, xenophobic right, whose uh, discourse is based on hatred and destruction. There's nothing uh, constructive. There's only this uh, verbal violence, this hatred. This only objective is to uh, produce ruins on, of democracy, of uh, living together. And then there is this uh, third uh, strength, the force of, uh, for change, the force for, con for building, the force for transforming, which we personify. History, tradition, the mission which is ours is that. This civic mission for change by defending our values, but also by changing uh, the face of the world. This really, really is an essential part of our project and of our mission. And this is why, on behalf of all the parliamentarians I uh, represent here. This is why I'm so uh, proud of uh, this cooperation with my friends, uh, the, the, including Catherine, for having uh, been in favor of the drafting of this uh, declaration. We are going to sign a few minutes from now with, with Kathleen. This is why it, this is an important moment in an important project uh, in Paris with François Hollande, with Manuel Valls, but in, is there in the world, is, is there a, a family as large as this uh, progressive socialist family? This family must make this question the heart of this major battle for change. Thank you. I would ask you now to welcome the president of the European Socialist Party, Sergei Stanishev. You have the floor. Dear friends, party leaders, commissioners, Prime Ministers, fellow members of the European Parliament and members of national parliaments. It's really very exciting to speak in front of you on this matter. I would like particularly to thank Jean-Christophe Cambadelis, the leader of the French Socialist Party, for his initiative of gathering us here together, the whole social democratic family in Europe, in Paris, just few weeks before COP21, and it's a big challenge. I would also like to express gratitude to the President of France, François Hollande, for having the courage of initiating COP21 in Paris, because many other leaders shied away. It's not an easy task, it's a big global problem, it's a big challenge, and it's a serious political risk. And I believe that in the last months and weeks, and in the weeks to come, a lot of will be done by the President of France, by the French government, by Prime Minister Valls also, in order to make what will happen 
in Paris in December a success story. So it does not repeat Copenhagen. And uh, I'm also very grateful to the initiative of our MEPs who really provided, especially our rapporteur, Gilles Parnot, uh, a very good position of the European Parliament, which really is an ambitious one. And I will be very frank to you. Some years ago, global warming, climate change, looked a bit of an abst abstract issue to me. I knew it's happening. Everybody knows. We could watch TV and things like that and see how nature is changing in front of us. But after all, in 2050, I probably will not be alive. And some years later, I had two little kids. One is two, another four now. And this issue became very close to me, personally, as to every parent in Europe or around the world, and what kind of world they will be living in. Will they be able to enjoy the beauties of nature, to breathe fresh air, not to be flooded? And this is now really an urgency, what we're doing today, and I think the important thing from our conference today and from the 21 proposals which we shall be signing together is that European socialists and social democrats are together, united, for a very ambitious and binding deal in Paris in December. And this is the important political message. But as we understand also, everybody is talking about the need to address the climate change. But we are saying very clearly that we have our own specific agenda and issues, which are purely socialist. And the first issue is about social justice. This is one of the fundamental values for our political family. And we all realize that climate change affects vulnerable groups of people much more than others. They suffer more and this has to be changed. And this is our ambition as well. For this reason, climate change directly touches upon this very fundamental issue of our political family. As well as social injustice, we are here today because this is a question of intergenerational justice. We have to act now, it's a problem today, and not to postpone it to the shoulders of our children and grandchildren, because then it's not that only it will be much more expensive and more difficult to achieve, but who knows, would it actually be reversible at all? And we have to be very responsible now. I would like to strengthen another important social, socialist agenda on the climate change. And, uh, as we all understand, the developing countries, uh, for them, climate action is particularly challenging. And they suffer a lot because they don't have the money. And they're also, at the same time, particularly exposed to climate impacts and don't have the capacities and the resources that developed countries can provide in order to address this big problem. And this is, one as, this is why, as European socialists and democrats, we are convinced that those countries with the highest historical responsibility, as well as more capacities and capabilities, and financial resources, and amongst them, certainly in the European Union, must make a larger contribution to climate finance for developing countries. It's a matter of justice, of fairness, of solidarity. However, as we understand the world is changing so rapidly, and today there are new big major economies like China, India, Brazil, they're emerging, growing, and contributing to the climate change and pollution. And this is why we have to be also frank and say clearly, all countries in all continents have to take their share of responsibility. 
Because even if Europe does its utmost, and I believe we shall do, the rest should also follow. But our example is really very important. But I would like to stress also on another element. Climate change is a big challenge. But let's look at it also as an opportunity. An opportunity to have a green economy, to change the way how economies are functioning in general, because the transition to a low carbon, resource efficient economy will require changes in the way we produce and we consume our natural resources. And uh, I'm very proud that on this issue, our commissioners, who are led by Franz Timmermans, uh, are taking a lead for sustainable growth, for green economy, including the responsibilities of Maro Shevchevich, who is working on the energy union with all the elements exactly which will help us address the issue of uh, energy efficiency in the first place, but many other issues as well, like the flaws of renewable energy within the European market. Our commission, Commissioner Vella, who is working very hard to move aw away from the take, make, consume, dispose pattern of growth towards a circular economy, as our leader in the European Parliament, Gianni Pitella, said. So there are so many things to do, but the important thing is that we as a political family are united about addressing this issue and we are ambitious and we want to lead on this issue. And this is a message to the whole European society. Today, these 21 very interesting, ambitious proposals to tackle climate change, I think uh, they are a big step forward. And they are a challenge, challenge to the heads of state, not only in Europe, but across the world, to the prime ministers, to follow and to show that they are acting according to the responsibilities in front of the world and also in front of the future generations. So for us, climate policy is also social policy, and it is clearly outlined in our views. It's also development policy and policy of solidarity. It is also an economic policy, and I believe that for the future, it will remain also one of the top priorities of our political family. And I would like to thank all of you that we are together with the ambition to make another strong step forward. So thank you very much and good luck today.